Healthy in this video will discuss electron diffraction from small volumes. In TEM, since the sample is very thin and the features are very small, so all the diffractions we see are from small volumes. Here, we'll focus on the thin film effect as well as diffraction from planar defects and the precipitates. You have seen this slide in one of the previous videos when we discussed the evil sphere. The foil is very thin and assuming it is very flat, in the reciprocal space we'll have the rare rods which are perpendicular to the thin foil surface. When the evil sphere cuts the rare rod at the very center, the intensity is the highest and there is no excitation error. When the evil sphere cuts off the center of the rare rod, then the intensity will be lower and will have the excitation error. Let's have a closer look. If the evil sphere cuts the rare rod from the upper top, the excitation error is negative. If the evil sphere cuts the bottom half, the excitation error will be positive. Now let's think about a few scenarios. The first is what if we change the TEM specimen thickness? In real space, if the specimen is thicker, in the reciprocal space, the rare rods will be shorter. What this tells us is as we move to larger G vectors, the intensity of the spots can diminish a lot faster in thicker specimens. The second scenario is what if we tilt the specimen? As we tilt the specimen in real space, we also tilt the rare rods in the reciprocal space. The excitation error at the transmitted beam is still zero. The excitation error on the right will be positive because the evil sphere is cutting the lower half of the rare rods. The excitation error on the left hand side then will be negative. So far, we've only looked at the flat specimens, but in real life, a lot of the specimens have a wedge shape. In this case, we'll have two non parallel surfaces, and each will give rise to a rare rod. In the example shown here, the top surface will give you a rare rod like that. The bottom surface will give you a rare rod like this. If the excitation error is equal to zero, it will cut through the intersection of those two rare rods and give you only one diffraction spot. However, if the excitation error is not equal to zero, doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it will give rise to two closely spaced diffraction spots called doublets. Up to here, we've only discussed the perfect crystals. What if we have other features in the TEM specimen? Let's start by looking at planar defects. Using stacking fault as an example, we have a small volume of perfect crystal here, and we have electron beam coming down from the top. Let's introduce a stacking fault. That stacking fault will also create a rare rod. If the evil sphere cuts through the rare rod from the center, it will give rise to a streaking on the projection. In this example, you see two very bright spots, indicating the excitation error here is zero. Between these two bright spots, you see a fairly faint streaking. The streaking is from the presence of the planar defect. In the case of precipitates, the diffraction pattern not only carries the information of the crystal structure of those precipitates, it also bears the information of the precipitate shapes. Taking the cubic precipitate as an example, the rare rod shapes are shown on the right. The same concept can be extended to precipitates with spherical disk and the rod shapes. Out of all the precipitates, the GP zones in aluminum or iron-based alloys are most famous in diffraction studies. GP zones are very fine precipitates with a few nanometers in length, but only a few atomic layers in thickness. From the TEM micrograph here, you can see many of the GP zones that align in this direction. They correspond to the streaking in the diffraction pattern in this direction. For the precipitates aligned orthogonal to the first set of precipitates, they cause streaking orthogonal to the first set of streaks. Let's take a step even further. If you have periodic features in the micrograph, the periodicity will be reflected in the diffraction pattern. In the micrograph on the left, you see an ordered array of dislocations. Such order is represented by these extra spots in the diffraction pattern. In contrast, in region B, there's no such dislocations. 
Therefore, there's no additional spots present in the diffraction pattern. Similarly, in the example on the right, you have an array of dislocations. This periodicity is shown by those streakings between these two diffraction spots. The distance between the streaks is actually inversely related to the spacing of those dislocations in real space. By the end of this video, I hope you can appreciate that when you acquire a diffraction pattern, the information is not solely from the crystal structure. Other parameters such as how flat your specimen is, whether you have planar defects or not, what shapes those precipitates are, can also affect what you see in diffraction patterns. In the next video, we'll take a small step back and talk about the parallel electron beam diffraction of amorphous, nanocrystalline, and single crystal materials.